Hello and welcome back to Talks with Walks. This is episode 18, and today is Friday, April 12th. First episode in like a month, which is... I mean, it's crazy, but it's not like... I'm not like, oh no, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm not like... I don't know, like I'm not freaking out. Because the last episode, well, I guess, was March around March 12th, 13th. And I think that next week was spring break. Or no, that next week I... I went to sleep because I was playing basketball the night before, and then the next week was spring break. And the week after that, I just couldn't really manage to get in, and then now we're here. But I'm happy to be back in the studio, happy to be back recording Talks with Walks, because, you know, I have a month of stuff to talk about. But in reality, it's not a lot of stuff to talk about. But, you know, I'm still going to talk about a bunch of stuff, because stuff is what this podcast is about. This this, this should really just be called Stuff with Walks, because that's really all it is because talks with walks kind of like sounds like I'm like talking with somebody every episode. Like we've, like we've seen, I've had a total of three guests and one of them has come on twice. So that's four guest appearances out of now 18 episodes, but whatever, a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, and I guess let's, yeah, let's just jump right in. Uh, I guess I'll just talk about what I've been up to over the past month outside of, you know, sports teams. But like I said, so the week after, the last episode, I was just playing basketball the night before, and I was just gassed. I was like, I'm just going to sleep in because I'm tired, and I don't want to wake up at 8 to get to the studio at 9. Because, I mean, I, I can get to the studio later, but I think it's just more about the fact that I've talked to, you know, the station director, and, and he's said, you know, yeah, 9 is a good time. So I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to like come in here at a time that I haven't talked about and then not be able to record the show. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a break and relax. And the week after that, I went to Friendsville, Maryland with my family for the weekend for spring break. Uh, Friendsville, like Ohio Powell area, and Friendsville is like the one of the smallest towns I've ever seen. Like it's like a very like stuck in the '80s kind of town. Like it's very very small, and not a lot of chain spots are nearby. Like it's it's a lot of just like local digs. Like there's this there's this place called the Root Cafe, which is pretty delicious. I think I ate like over like those those two weeks I was on vacation, spring break, and then the week after that, I think I drank maybe like six lattes and I'm not someone that drinks coffee like ever I only really drink coffee on the weekend so it makes sense that I drink it you know for those weekend trips but like I, I drank like custom lattes like six times like I think every day like fri- Friday through Sunday back to back weekends I drank a fun latte so that was really cool I like lattes I, I, I work at a coffee donut bakery shop so I'm, I'm, I'm used to drinking coffee but those lattes were delicious I think Friday I had the purple haze latte which was like a lavender latte which was which was very good when we stopped in Cumberland. And Cumberland, I was there back-to-back weekends, or I went through there at least back-to-back weekends because I'll finish talking about Friendsville. So Friendsville was great. We stayed at this place called The Hobbit Home, um, which is a nice little place. had a pool table and a table tennis table, so we were playing table tennis a bunch. I was smoking everybody. I'm so good at table tennis. Uh, and then we went to Ohio Powell State Park, went on a few hikes, and then we went to these falls, which is really sweet. Like, waterfalls are always cool. I got a lot of sweet pictures with my film camera for my black and white photography class because the assignment right now is um it's shadows or it's light as form and I interpret that as oh shadows which I guess is kind of you know it works but a lot of my like classmates have taken a lot cooler photos than I have but I'm just like I like the woods I like the shadows that tree coverage makes because it's almost like a negative of the forest which I think is just a neat kind of thing to think about and like another thing with my black and white photography class is like our <clears throat> our final portfolio is coming up, and we have to like take photos that are all um, I don't know how to explain it. We have to take photos. We have to, we have to make seven prints that all have some sort of theme about them, where it's like so light as form is the theme. That's the theme for this current project, and for our final, we have to think of our own kind of like narrative idea about these photos, and it all has to you know be cohesive, and it can't be like this. It's not, it doesn't have to be, like, super complex, but it can't just be, like, you know, the like the cliche, like, I can't even think of anything. But, like, I'm having a hard time thinking of what I want to do for this portfolio because I think I'm a creative person. But a lot of my creativity comes from the assignment being, spe- like, spelled out for me. I can't really think of any assignment that I've done that has relied solely on me just conjuring something up. Like, I'm, I'm someone that's like, all right, do this. Like, I have to be giving explicit instructions for my creativity, and then I can go about, you know, being creative. Like, all right, write a story about this, or just write, you know, write a commercial about this, or write a commercial. Like, I can do a commercial. Like, I, I'm a good writer, but in terms of just, like, like an art class, like, I, I am really, really, really bad at drawing what is in my head. Like, I'm thinking of Charizard right now, and I can see Charizard's arms, his legs, I can see his tail, and I can see him breathing fire. 
but there's no way I can draw that out on paper right now. I can't. I just have a hard time doing that. I'm a realist when it comes to art, and it's just it's just how it goes. So I, I'm really having a hard time thinking of what I'm going to do for this portfolio project. Like I thought initially, like one of my ideas was like since it's seven prints, I could do like oh, I could do something something the way something something looks each day of the week, and it's dependent on just kind of habit. Like I was initially I was thinking like this is kind of dumb. I was thinking like how does my car in my driveway park every day of the week? I'm just like, that's, that's, that's stupid. And that's boring. Taking photos of a car in a driveway. That's, that's lame. I just can't really think of anything that I want to do. I'm probably going to ask him this next week about like some ideas in the past, just to kind of get some idea of inspiration. Because I really, I really have no idea what I'm going to do. And I'm kind of, kind of tweaking, but the class is fairly simple. It's just, you know, finding an hour to develop film and then finding, like three hours to, to make your prints but it's like I, I don't do anything besides that like I, I go to school I go to work I go to basketball that is that is what I do pretty much every day but yeah so that was that was friends it was a lot of fun it was just a chill family trip I got I got to read a lot of Dune which was great I watched Ex Machina and it was funny because we, we got to the Hobbit home and it's like a really 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 nice house it has a kitchen has you know a living room with a television it has Four bedrooms for my parents and my brothers. Um, and we went in there, and there's this room to the left that was like had a bed and it had a big TV. And I was like, "Oh, I'll take this room." And I, I was expecting some objection because, like, you know, my parents was like, "Oh, the TV, that's the parent room." Then they took like the small room at the end of the hall that had like a big stand-up mirror, and they took that. And I was like, "Oh, sweet!" So I have a television in my room, so I can fall asleep to YouTube like I usually do. So I did that all weekend, and I watched Ex Machina. So that was great. I got to you know experience, not, not experience, but I got to you know. Fall asleep the way I usually do, falling asleep to a YouTube playlist. Like I, literally, I, I literally signed into my YouTube channel on the TV and watched the YouTube playlist that I have for myself that I fall asleep to every night. So that was funny. But yeah, it, it was just a great trip. A lot of good food. And I love that. I love food. And it, it was just a good time. Always good to get away with the family. And then the week after that, I went to Pittsburgh with my dad, my brother, and two of my cousins. And that trip was freaking amazing. That was awesome. So like I said, we... We drove through Cumberland to get to Friendsville the week before that spring break. And then for this one, we drove to Cumberland and took a train to Pittsburgh on Friday. And that was awesome. And Cumberland, that's the town of steeples. Like, I think you could, you can face any direction. You'll see at least two, one or two steeples. It, it, it was kind of very interesting. And that entire town is, like, redoing every single, like, alleyway and road. So it was really funny just walking around because, like, the roads were just gravel. We had to, like, stick to, like, this one sidewalk that was on the side of the street. And my dad had to, like, carry his bike because we took a train to Pittsburgh, and he took his bike up. And then we took a train back, and he rode his bike down. Like, we left. We got home on Sunday at, like, 2 p.m. My dad got home at on Tuesday at, like, 7 because he, like, he rode back and camped because he's just – he's a crazy person that loves to bike. But, oh, my gosh, Pittsburgh was – one of the best trips I've taken in a long time. I'd never been to Pittsburgh before, and we went there to see the Orioles play them on Saturday, play the Pirates. So we took it. We let. We got to Cumberland at what time did we get to Cumberland? Five, four thirty-five. I think we got dinner at this uh, combo Orioles Pittsburgh bar and watched Game One of that Pittsburgh series at the bar. So that was fun. And then we took a train. I think our train was seven twenty. So we got into Pittsburgh at like eleven thirty, and all I did was play Animal Crossing and read Dune Messiah on uh, on the train and took a little nap. But it was weird. Like, I think I napped both times on the train, like on the way up and on the way down. But I don't really feel like I was ever really asleep. Like, it's kind of like that sleep you take um, on like a, like, like a late car ride home from a family party where it's like you, you, you sleep and then you wake up as soon as you, like, you recognize the turn into your neighborhood. Like the way I was sleeping, I, I I I don't really ever feel like I was rested. I just kind of my eyes were closed and I wasn't doing anything. It was really bizarre, but the train was cool. The train ride was was nice. I I, I just you know I brought my switch. I brought my book, and like I I only really played my switch on the train, which I think was you know I don't want to play my switch you know when I'm in Pittsburgh trying to enjoy the town, but you know I brought my enter- entertainment bag, and that's you know my 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 mind stimulator. So that was great. But yeah, the train ride up was awesome. We got in there 11:30, got to our hotel. I went to sleep, and then the next day, we got up at, I think, 9, and we started to move about the country by, like, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and we went to this place called Waffle Incaffeinated, and that place was dope. That place had 
really good waffles. And it was, uh, I, I, I like, I don't know, I, I don't really go to a lot of gimmicky, there's not a lot of gimmicky spots in Bel Air, but I was expecting, you know, to be able to get like a three stack waffle with whipped cream and berries, but they do a single waffle, but it still, it was really filling. Like they did, they, 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 they did a really great job. I got a waffle. I got the Nutty Monkey waffle. I think it was banana, peanut butter, chocolate, whipped cream, and a chocolate bar. Oh, I didn't. I don't. I don't want the chocolate bar. I don't like chocolate bars that much. And I got a side of sausage gravy, and I had got. I got, I got sausage gravy the week prior in Friendsville. And my dad makes sausage gravy and biscuits for my birthday every year and like every holiday. It's, my, it's probably my favorite food ever. I love sausage gravy and biscuits. But the sausage gravy the week prior tasted a little weird. They were missing out on a few seasonings. It just kind of felt kind of weird. But then the one at Waffle and Caffeinated, I swear, is probably the closest that I've had to my dad's sausage gravy. And that that's a high standard because that sausage gravy is delicious. And like I said, it's my favorite food. I get it every year for my birthday. I do sausage gravy and pancakes every year for my birthday. But, man, this sausage gravy was spectacular. So I got a waffle. I got sausage gravy. And then I got their custom house latte, which is like a maple latte with foam on top. And it had like a cinnamon sugar waffle. And like it was super sweet because like I'm not I'm not I don't drink coffee every day so I'm not like kind of I'm not like a black coffee guy like when I drink coffee I want to have like a nice sweet flavor to it and this was delicious like I was thoroughly impressed and it was so yummy and I drank it in like two seconds but that cinnamon sugar waffle it really put some pep in my step like just I, I love cinnamon sugar and it just made a waffle shape on my freaking coffee like come on that's that's awesome I was, I was a happy guy so yeah we went to waffle and caffeinated and then we walked around town. Um, looking for a record store because I collect records and CDs. My cousin, he has a massive record and CD collection. And, you know, it's just nice because it's just nice, you know, looking at physical, I just like physical media. So we looked around and we found one. It was this place called, um, oh man, what's it called? It's called like Eric's Emporium or something. I don't know. But it was this four floor store. The first floor, ground floor, had records and CDs, a fridge with a bunch of drinks, Funko Pops, comic books, DVDs, VHS, posters, like McDonald's Happy Meal toys from like the 90s. Like it was crazy. It was probably the coolest shop I've ever seen. That's the first floor. And I grabbed like a Silver Surfer comic from the first floor. I was like, this is a cool cover. It's like a newer issue. That's cool. I like Silver Surfer. I just wanted to grab that because it's, you know, just like a little, 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 little thing I can grab. And then I went to the bottom floor. So the ground floor of the four, if you're going bottom up, it's the second floor. Because it's like out of four. So we, I went to the bottom, bottom floor. That was floor one. That was just all comic books. Some action figures as well. And then I went back upstairs and like this guy stopped. He was like, hey, 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 where are you going? And I was like, I'm going back up. And he says, wait, well, you got something? I said, yeah, I got it from the ground floor. Because I guess they have some sort of policy. I don't know. I, I shouldn't be making fun of them. But. They have some sort of policy where you can't take items from different floors. You get to, like, buy it on each floor or at least, like, keep it on the first floor, which is maybe they, they should have more explicit signage for that because the signs I did see were on, like, I went, I mean, maybe I'm just not perceptive. It's just, I don't know. It, sh- it, it should be in big, that should be, like, when I walk in, they should tell me that. That's just kind of me being ignorant, but that's just kind of my take. Like, the only signage is on the door when you're exiting from the like one of the rooms or one of the one of the floors as opposed to when you're entering. Like I think if 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 that was on like the because like you walk in and there's like a foyer and then you can you open the door into the main room. Like that should be the first sign you see as opposed to seeing the sign you see as you're beginning to exit, which I guess makes sense because it's like oh, if you're getting the exit and you see that sign, you should probably turn back. But it's like I don't know. I should I should have that concept in my mind as I'm entering the store as opposed to when I'm trying to you know traverse through these floors. Like it kind of just impedes my flow of commerce but that's just me being a complaining bitch but whatever so i went to the bottom floor all comic books action figures and i went back up and he was like hey hey and i was like oh i just got it from the ground floor so i was like okay and i went back up to the third floor third floor was all records and that's where my cousins were um and there was also like playboy mags i thought was really funny there's also like dvds and like movie soundtracks and i got this bread record i got weather report i got tony williams i got this crazy one it was by wade Denning, I think. It's called Shout- Sounds to Make You Shiver. I'm fairly certain it was called. It is, wait, let me pull it up here. Yes, by Wade Wade Denning, Halloween, colon, Sounds to Make You Shiver. came out in 1974. It's 30 minutes long, and literally all it is is, like, haunted house sounds. Like, the first 15 minutes is, like, Dracula and his victim, 
There's a song called Dogs, which is just dogs barking. There's a song called Cats, Cats Meowing and, like, hissing. There's a witch laugh one. There's a shutter sound, like, you know, like when shutters are, like, banging in the wind. There's thunder. There's Frankenstein's Monster Escapes. Like, it's, like, the funniest thing ever. And it has, like, the coolest art ever, too. Like, it's just, like, this really sweet Halloween art. And I was like, damn, this is the coolest find. Like, imagine. Like, it's just funny. <sighs> like, imagine me. Like, at, like, a party or something just going on Ox. Like, yo, yo, who's on, who's on Ox? Oh, yeah, it's, it's me. I'm playing Wade Denning's Halloween Sounds to Make You Shiver. You heard his witch laugh track? This this track is crazy. It's just a really funny. And I, I, I don't own any records like that where it's literally just, like, um, soundboard, like, Halloween sounds. I thought it was hilarious. So that was that was probably my favorite find of the weekend. Uh, when, when I got bread, Tony Williams. Oh, I got a traffic record, which was dope. Just really some really cool finds. I I love collecting records. Um, I don't think I got any CDs this trip. Yeah, no, no I did not get any CDs. But yeah, I mean that store was dope. And then the the then the floor above that was was CDs. And there were any CDs I wanted to grab. And like the guys were saying, yeah, it's just music this century. But like I really only found saw like metal from this century as opposed to like modern hip hop. And like modern, like the the modern music that I'm more attuned to, but the, the shop was super dope. I had a really good time. And then <clears throat> what did we do after that? Oh, my dad and my brother had left prior to when me when my cousins and I had left. So they were they were going to like this fountain which is by PNC Park. So they just told us to meet us there. So we dropped off our stuff at the hotel and went to follow them. And let me tell you, Pittsburgh is a fantastic city. It is it is lovely. And apparently, there's no residential living. In Pittsburgh, which I think, which I found out, which I think is kind of um, adds to the good feeling of it because it's just all buildings that are, you know, office buildings and like shops and stuff like that. Like it feels so much less um, condensed and um, I mean, obviously populated. Like it just, I don't know. Like I'm walking, like you, you'll be walking through the like the the streets and you can look up and you, you can get like a real sense of the height of the buildings because they're all kind of individual. Like they're all separate from one another. As opposed to like, you know, walking through Baltimore, where, where it feels like every building is like so close to one another, where you're not really getting a sense of the scale. Like it's just, it was just a very unique city walking experience, where it's like, I don't know, it just, it just, it's, it, it just feels like a nice city. I don't really know how to explain it. I, mean, I don't know. It was, just, it was just a super pleasant town to walk through. So we walked from the comic book shop to the hotel and then back, headed towards PNC Park, and we were gonna meet my dad and my brother at the fountain, but then. We like couldn't find it, so we just decided to go to Permani Brothers, and we went to Permani Brothers, and our my brother and my dad met us there. And man, Permani Brothers is the best sandwich I have ever had in my entire life. I'd heard about it, I'd heard insanely incredible things about it. I know it's you know like it's the Pittsburgh sandwich. I was not prepared for how delicious this sandwich is going to be. So we were we were waiting in line it was like a long line like out the door and it's only like a mile mile and a half two miles from PNC Park so we we weren't tripping like the game was at 405 and we were getting there at like 2 so we were waiting in line and then my dad was just like why don't we just sit outside like we were already dressed for the cold cuz we were preparing it to be pretty cold in Pittsburgh and it really, it really was and it was like 55 so that was nice we were like why don't we just sit outside and like we asked like asked the server and he said yeah, yeah yeah just sit down so we sat down Nice little spot, like I and like the inside. I would have preferred to sit inside just to get a full feel of Permani Brothers as like you know just like an ambiance standpoint. But anyway, that's how it was great. You know, you got to see the the bustling Pittsburgh, you know, downtown Main Street. So that was cool. But man, this sandwich. So Permani Brothers, they they do like fresh cut Italian bread, and their thing is they put fries on it, and it's like it's like peanut oil fried, like Five Guys style, typical delicious best fry ever. So I got the pastrami and cheese, and this sandwich. Like I said, is the best sandwich I have ever had in my entire life. It's fresh cut Italian Italian bread, homemade coleslaw, tomato, French fries, pastrami, and cheese. And when I tell you it is the size, what's something I can compare this to? I don't even know. It's just a massive freaking sandwich. Like they cut it in half, and like one half is the size of like. I'm trying to think, what can I compare this to? I mean, it, it's pretty much as tall as like, if you look at your hand and you go from wrist to f- middle fingertip, that's pretty much how tall that sandwich was. It was ridiculously massive and delicious. And the like one of the one of like the underrated things about it, I think, was that as opposed to like you know having like a big tray full of plates, he like the the server just dropped it off in like wax paper and just dropped it down and just gave it to us. And I was like, dude, that's sweet. I love that. You know, 
just kind of convenience sake. But, dude, this sandwich is the best sandwich I've ever had. It's so freaking good. Like, I, 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 I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it's just the entire, like, the coleslaw is fantastic. I, I mean, pastrami and cheese, you can't go wrong with that. And that Italian bread is just so, oh, my God. It's just the most stupidly delicious thing I've ever had in my entire life. It's it's just fantastic. I need to go back. Apparently, there's one in Hagerstown, so I might be making a day trip out to Hagerstown just to get Primandy Brothers. <clears throat> because why not? Because, it, like I said, it's the best sandwich I've ever had in my entire life. Or either this one or the one. Well, I don't want to spoil anything. So, got Primandy Brothers. It was great. And then we walked to PNC Park, got to the ballpark, I think like an hour before first pitch. And that ballpark is pretty freaking awesome. I've gone to Camden Yards at least, you know, 40 to 50 times in my entire life. I love Camden Yards. And it's going to take a lot for Eddie Park. And I've only been to three ballparks, but PNC Park is pretty dang close. It was, it was, uh, crazy, you know, fine experience that. And the Roberto, or the Roberto Clemente Bridge is also just really cool. It's just a cool experience to walk across that bridge. But, man, PNC Park is, is lovely. And we had seats... Um, just like back into the left from home plate in the upper deck, and that's that's how you really get a sense of the scale of this this ballpark. Like I, I you know, it, it's always nice just like in in a vacuum to you know sit closer to the, to the field of play. But for this, you know, I really got to experience that fantastic Pittsburgh skyline and to see the bridge, because like the way that the, the the ballpark set up, it's just it's just beautiful. You get to see you know the nice you know, they have a nice Pittsburgh P in the center of the the outfield. They have the you know the shrubs, the spelling pirates out in center field, and then they have just so much space where you can just see the beauty of that Pittsburgh skyline and the bridge. Like, that's just, it, 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 it's it's really a work of art. And at the Pittsburgh game, at, at the Pirates games, they have um, this thing called the Renegade Dog, which is a foot-long beef dog with pierogies, pickle chips, and, like, roast beef. And I was like, dude, that's that sounds delicious. I want to get it. And I think everybody, like my, my cousins, my brother, and my dad were like, yeah, let's, we're going to get it. And then my dad went out, and they were out. Like, they ran out. Because apparently, like, the stall that sells them are just, like, tra- they, they, they just, like, travel about the ballpark. And they, um, yeah, they don't stay in one place. And they ran out. So, we're like, oh, damn, that's, that's disappointing. But then we, we, then we, like, looked around, and I was like, dude, like, that Premier Brothers sent we, we just kept talking about how delicious it was. And we was like, you know what? Why don't we just go back? So, after watching the Orioles get walked off, which was just a, it was a very bizarre feeling, watching the Orioles get walked off, because I'm so used to, you know, seeing them be the home team. But that's besides the point. That was just that was just a disappointing game overall. We got like no hit through five. You know, finally got some runs together, and then it was just all for naught because O'Neill Cruz is just it, it. It was just his his aura was palpable at that game. Like I mean, I, even watching him on TV, like he's like one of those guys. Like he may not be you know one of the best players in baseball, but he just has this like sense about him where he just he he feels like he can, he can go yard at any time. And I mean, he went yard in, in game one, and he had the walk off hit. Like he's it's kind of like that same thing. It's just like guys with like that stature, and they have the, 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 just 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 this swagger about them. I don't know. I, I, I'm curious if there's any Orioles that you know opposing teams feel that about. But I mean, like guys like I'm trying to think like guys in my division that are like that. I mean, when Aaron Judge comes up to the plate, I feel like he's always gonna like tear us up. Like it's just guys that have like this like sense about them. When you see them, you're just like, oh damn, like he's gonna do some damage here. But that's that's besides the point. Like that that's the best, probably the best ballpark. For the Orioles to lose in. So, like, I honestly didn't really care. But as we were leaving the ballpark to head to Permitty Brothers, we ran into Kevin Brown on the bridge. And it was so funny. Like, he was, we were we were walking. We got, like, almost to the end. And this guy comes up to his left, you know, drinking a water bottle. And I look at him. I do, like, a double take. And I'm like, what the hell? And my dad's like, Kevin Brown? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So he was just like, oh, yeah, it's me. I'm Kevin Brown. So I got a picture with him. That was, like, the coolest thing ever. I was, like, I was like in awe. I, 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 I was stunned. And it was crazy because we were in the upper deck. And the the broadcast booth is, you know, back behind home plate, like elevated, like three levels. And we left as soon as O'Neill Cruz got that hit. Like as soon as as soon as we saw that ball land in the outfield, we stood up and we started walking out. So we left pretty early. Like we weren't we weren't hanging behind, like we weren't letting any Pirates fans, you know, just like cheering for the game. Like we we, we left pretty quickly as a group and then we were out on the bridge. And I imagine, you know, the play by play like the broadcasters have like some sort of quick way to get out as well, but it's like he, he made pretty good he, he made pretty good time getting out. So that was really cool. That was like a really Nice, you know, one in a million thing. You'd be able to run into Kevin Brown right after he called an Orioles loss. But that was awesome. That was one of the coolest things ever, getting to meet him in such a great town, you know, after experiencing such a great ballpark and, you know, going to the P- going to the Roberto Clemente Bridge. So then we went back to Permanente Brothers, 
waited in line. There's like, you know what? Let's just sit outside again. So we sat outside again, watched NC State lose to Purdue, blah, blah, blah. Got the sandwich again. This time I got the New Yorker. Like the first sandwich was literally called the pastrami and cheese, and then I got the New Yorker, which is basically the pastrami and cheese plus corned beef and spicy mustard. That's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. That's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. Pastrami and corned beef, that house-made coleslaw, that delicious Italian white bread, spicy mustard, French fries, tomatoes. Like, shoot me in the face. Like, that is the most delicious combination of things a human being can put together into a singular consumable item. It was ridiculous. And then as we're sitting around, who but Brett Hollander walks up to, like, the door trying to get in, and then he waits in line. And it's like, oh, my gosh, Brett Hollander. So we say hi to him. He chats with us for a little bit. You know, we let him know we're from, Bo- we're from Baltimore, talk to the Orioles a little bit. That was super cool. Because, you know, getting to see Kevin around, like, we, we took a picture. You know, he was just on his way. We didn't really get to chat with him for too much, for too long. But Brett Hollander was just there, you know, chatting about. We, we talked to him for a little bit, and he was waiting for a takeout order. And then before we left, I, I snapped a picture, and we talked a little bit more. That was super cool. I tagged him on Twitter. He, you know, replied to my comments saying, you know, get home back to – get home – Get back to Bar- to Maryland safe. So that was just super cool. It was it was just such a phenomenally awesome experience. Just overall, like that day was fantastic. And then we left for many other went to this place called Milkshake Factory. I got a delicious milkshake and some you know nice snacks for the road. Went back home, watched UConn beat Alabama, and then went to bed. So that was one of the like, you know the most fun days I've had in a while. Just getting to walk about Pittsburgh. I miss it right now. I want to go back. Like it was just so much fun. And you know that group of people is just you know getting to hang with my. My dad, my brother, and you know, two of my cousins. And I get like I get lunch with one of my cousins, like every week, so I, I, I get to see him a bunch. But my other cousin, I don't know, really get to see him that much. Besides family events, it was cool to get to hang out with him for a weekend. But that, it was just such an awesome trip. Went to bed, woke up at four in the morning for the train. Uh, I read a bunch of Dune Messiah on the train, and um, yeah, got back home. Yeah, that was that was probably that honestly might be my favorite trip I've ever taken. It was just fun, just a nice little compact. Weekend trip in a lovely city, getting to, getting to watch the Orioles. Like, it's just so many things that I love. Getting to eat a delicious sandwich. It was, it was, it was, it was awesome. I, and we were, we made talks about, you know, going on a similar trip to, you know, maybe, like, seeing them play Milwaukee next year. Uh, even maybe going to maybe Wrigley next season. Like, there's a lot of other ballparks we could go to and have, like, a very similar trip. Like, going to Chicago, going to Milwaukee, going to, like, Atlanta to see the Braves. Like, I definitely want to go on another trip either next year, either this year or – most likely next year, but man, it was just such an awesome trip. Like Pittsburgh, if you get a chance to, you know, go out there. I know it's like it, it's 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 not a you know it's not a not a casual walk out there, but I mean it's just such a fantastic town. And Permanent Brothers is the best place you can eat a sandwich. So it was awesome. I had so much fun. Uh, but yeah, that was Pittsburgh. That was my last two weekends, and now I'm back here. And I guess you know let's, let's transition into the sports talk. I suppose after a lot of personal talk. Well, actually no, let, let's talk. Dune, Dune Messiah. I finished Dune. What a fantastic book. Dune Part 2 is still probably, like, the best movie. Like, that and The Batman probably the best movies I've watched in theaters. Like, best new movies I've watched in the past, like, five to ten years. Like, those movies, stupid, stupid good. And Dune was a fantastic read. And I know a lot of people are saying it's a tough read, but I really didn't sense that. Like, I think the only thing that's, like, tough about it is that it's a lot of Paul internal di- internal dialogue, and it's a lot of just, you know, people in a room and as opposed to talking out loud, they're just kind of going about their thought process in their head, and it's going from like, oh, here's what Jessica, Jessica's thinking. Oh, here's what, you know, uh, Gaius Helen, Reverend Mother's thinking about. Here's what, you know, Chinese thinking about. Here's what Paul's thinking about, as opposed to them actually saying it. I can see that being a tough read for some people, but, I mean, the way this book is formatted, like, it's 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 nice. Like, it, it's, it, it's a lot longer than it would be if it was formatted normally. Like, it's as opposed to, like, it being, you know, like a, a six-inch book, like, width it's like four inches so as opposed to being like 300 pages for the the bulk of the book it's like 700 and that, that was fine because it's like i i don't know like it's it's it was formatted in the same way that like frankenstein was where it's a lot less words per page and just, yeah. that's just easier for me to read personally like i just i don't know i have a hard time when, t- when, it's, when the font is super small and there's like a million words per page as opposed to like a larger font and like only a hundred words per page. Like I just, it was, it was just a very appealing read for me. I finished that. I started reading Dune Messiah and Dune Messiah is also fantastic. Uh, a lot less combat. It's a lot more interpersonal connections and like the whole conspiracy against the emperor. And then like, most of it takes place in the emperor Atreides, uh, in his temple. It's so super cool. It's, it's like a, not like a, you know, stark departure from, you know, the rest of Dune, but it's just still like a super cool, 
just a different experience getting to see, you know, these characters interact vocally and physically as opposed to, you know, not a lot of combat. And it's just like, you know, a lot of just like, oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm the emperor, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to spoil anything. But, yeah, Dune Messiah is fantastic. I'm almost done that. And then I got Children of Dune after that. And I think God Emperor of Dune and then Dune Heretics. I don't know. But I love Dune so much. It's it's like all I'm thinking about right now. I love it. And I've been playing Animal Crossing. That's also been a lot of fun. Um, I'm not very good at Animal Crossing. Like, I started an island when it came out back in March of 2020. And I played it, like, pretty consistently for a while. I, I, I accumulated, you know, like, like, uh, like 115 hours in it. And I had a pretty solid island. But, it like, I don't know. I'm not a very... Like, I have OCD, and I'm an organized person in real life with things I can physically interact with. But when it, when it comes to being organized in a video game and creating, like, an appealing-looking town or, like, village. Like, in Minecraft, I have a hard time building a house and, like, having making my, like, area look aesthetically pleasing. But I want to lock in and make this Animal Crossing Island look aesthetically pleasing. But I'm playing it without time skips, so I'm just, like, playing a little bit every day. I'm just doing what I can. But I'm at, like, the slog part of the game where it's, like... I have to get, like, this three-star island to get K.K. Slider to show up. And, like, man, the requirements for that are just, like, shut the fuck up. I don't want to do this. It's it's it's, it's terrible. But I want to get terraforming because terraforming is when, like, the game actually starts for me, honestly, because that's when you can actually, you know, physically impact your island as opposed to just placing things. So I need to lock in. I need to get the three-star island because I need K.K. Slider to show up so I can actually, you know, get started on this island to make it look nice. But, yeah, that's Animal Crossing. Uh, I've been playing more Red Dead. I like got to the point where he has tuberculosis, so as opposed to you know progressing the story and playing as John, John Marston after Arthur dies, which I know Arthur dies, which is which sucks. That I know that, but whatever. But I don't, I don't want him to die just yet, so I'm just like doing every side quest I can before you know actually starting kicking off the story. Because I'm just like I want to play as Arthur because Arthur's cool. But yeah, that's that. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I don't know much honestly. Just been chilling, reading Dune Messiah, playing basketball. That's it. And I've been kind of cooking with basketball recently. I've got, I've developed, I've developed a pretty solid hook shot. That's become my signature move. Usually in ones, it's a little bit harder for me to um, reliably utilize it when I'm playing fives. But it's still, you know, it's be, it's become a pretty consistent shot for me. But yeah, that's me. Let's talk. Let's talk sports. Let's talk. Let's talk Kings first because they're the most disappointing. Kings have really. They, they, I think they've skidded to like be the draw even with the Lakers for the nine seed in the West in the play-in tournament, which which just kind of sucks. And it sucks because we have a relatively, like I think we're four or five games off from our record from last season, and last season we were the three seed. So I mean that that just goes to show you how insanely stupidly stacked the West is this season, and it's just you know the, the nature of the league. Like it's not going to be the same exact thing every single season. I mean, last season the Grizzlies were the two seed and now they're like the 13 seed. So, I mean, it's just, it's just the flow of sports. But, man, I mean, obviously losing two heavily impactful rotational pieces is going to hurt any team. Like, you know, being without Kevin Herter and Malik Monk is going to hurt us. But, I mean, I don't know. It just it, It's just kind of a slog right now. And it sucks, you know, not being able to get um, – Home field or home court advantage for this play-in, most likely, unless you know we can lock in with these last two games and hope that. Um, who's the? It's the Warriors. It's the Lakers. It's the Kings. And then who's the other play-in team? Is it the Pelicans? Or maybe the Suns. I don't know. It's all Pacific teams or something. But you know, it, uh, we we kind of need we we just need to lock in here, because if we're, I think if we're the seven to the eight, we get home court, and we get. Uh, we get two chances to make it into the the playoffs. But with the ten or nine seed, we get we're, we're we're playing away, and we get one chance to you know make it into the playoffs. So you know that's 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 that that's not very ideal. Um, but yeah, that that's the Kings right now. They're they're just playing sloppy basketball. It's just I don't know. You know we're missing you know two practically firecracker offensive pieces, um, which stinks and. I don't know. It's it's just the way that the season's winded down. It's just kind. It just kind of stinks. I don't know. But <coughs> I mean, it's just you know the nature of basketball. But whatever. Uh, On to the Orioles. Orioles eight and four. Beat the Red Sox last night after Colton Kowser hit two home runs. Gunnar Henderson had a home run. Tony Taters had a game tire home run. I remember I was I was in my car driving to basketball, and this was 
in the eighth. Yeah, it was in the eighth when Holiday got on base on an error, and then Adley grounded, uh, hit a grounder to, I think, short, and they tried to turn a double play, and their second baseman or shortstop didn't touch second. So Holiday was safe at second, and Adley got out at first. And for some reason, they pulled their lefty for to bring in a righty against Santander, and I was like, I was literally in my car saying, like, why in the world did they pull their lefty like, why would, why would you want to pitch to Lefty Santander? Which I feel like Lefty Santander is just, you know, 10 to 20 times better than righty. Which, I mean, it's just due to the fact that he hits more. So I'm not really pulling up any stats there. But I'm just like, in my head, Lefty Santander is better than righty. In the same way that Lefty Adley is better than righty. Righty Adley. It's just, I don't know. That's just my mindset when it comes to these switch hitting players on my team. I was like, okay. Like, I was like, you're gonna really going to pitch to Lefty Santander? And I was like, a, 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 I think the first pitch, I think he hit the, the game-tying home run. So that was awesome. Uh, I, didn't to, I didn't get to watch or listen to the rest of the game, but we won, which was fantastic. Colton Kowser had 10 RBIs in this three-game series, which is crazy. And it's awesome to see him doing well. You know, after the kind of the rough start to his career he had last season, like, it's just, it's just I'm super happy for him. He's, he's a great dude, very positive guy. And, you know, you can tell all the guys in the clubhouse love him. And, like... I feel bad. I feel bad for Austin Hayes, but it's also like he's a grown man. He wants to, you know, he's been a part of this team for a while. I'm, I'm not implying at all that he's, you know, not going to be part of this team. But it just kind of it just kind of stinks. In just like a general sense, just go looking at this objectively, it, it stinks, you know, to see a guy who's been a part of this team for so long essentially being getting benched for, you know, a young guy. And I, I'm, not, I'm not objecting this at all. I think Colton Kowser is the better bat and glove I don't know, probably a little, maybe a little bit worse glove. I don't know. But that's not to say Colton Kowser is a bad fielder. But it's just kind of, you know, you want to put your best foot forward. You want to put the best lineup out on the field every time. And currently that is playing Jordan Westberg. Or that, that, is, that is playing Colton Kowser. And it also, it's also playing, you know, Westy, Gunner, and that Jackson Holiday as opposed to Tony Kemp and Ramon Arias. And we DFA'd Tony Kemp. So, you know, we're putting the best roster out, putting the best nine guys out in the field every time. And, you know, it's great to see that. Because, you know, we finally have, ta- you know, you know the young talent to be able to field a pretty fantastic lineup. And I'm hoping that Austin Hayes, you know, either is able to get his head get his head right. You know, I think he started the season, what, like three for 30 or something crazy. Like, I don't know. I could see him becoming a defensive replacement guy. I could see him becoming, you know, just like a Sunday, like Ryan McKenna-esque. Like, he's like Ryan McKenna 2.0. Is that disrespectful? I don't know. That's just the way he's playing right now, where he's like, you know, a pretty fantastic defensive fielder, but his glove just isn't there. And it just kind of sucks, you know, to see see that happen. So maybe, you know, maybe he'll he'll get put in like Saturday or Sunday's lineup this week, as opposed to you know playing Ryan O'Hearn or Colton Kowser. And we'll you know we'll see him with a different approach at the plate. But you know, right now he's just not playing his best baseball. And Colton Kowser is hitting the cover off the ball. He's batting like 470 in like 30 at bats, which is just ridiculous. That's awesome. Jackson Holiday yet to record a hit, but he has gotten on base twice, I think, on a fielder's choice and an error. And he does have an RBI, so that's great. Uh, he's made a few fielding errors, but, I mean, he's 20 years old. I'm not, I'm not really going to, you know, call for him to get called back. And honestly, there's not really going to be anything for me to call for him to get called back unless he starts his career 0 for 50 and makes like six more errors. Like, I want to see Jackson Holiday out in the field. I want to see... As opposed to seeing as opposed to seeing Ramona Rios on the field, I want to see Jackson Holiday. Because it's exciting. It's getting more fans in the ballpark. And it's Jackson Holiday. He's our recent number one draft choice. Like I want to see him play baseball for the major league club. Um, uh, but besides that, the uh, uh, The team is playing fantastic baseball right now. Six of our eight wins have been come from behind, which is just truly just exactly to the tune of how the rest of the, the like, the last two years have gone. We're, like, I think we have the most come from behind wins in baseball. Like, I think we have a little bit more than the Reds do. Like, it's just, it's just awesome. It's really fun baseball. And it, it's been, it's been, we've, it's been a kind of formulaic way of baseball, at least for the past, like, six or seven games where it's, like, it's the worst baseball you've ever seen for the first five innings. And then, like, the bats start to heat up. Like, I think we're batting, like, 211 through the first five. And then we're hitting, like, 360 through six through nine, which is just, which is just hilariously indicative of how these games have been going. Uh, pitching has been actually phenomenal. The bullpen has been fantastic, one of the best bullpens in baseball, especially after, you know, losing Felix Bautista, you know, guys like Jacob Weber stepping up, Danny Coulomb. I mean, he was great last year, but he's having an even better year this season. 
Uh, Craig Kimbrell has been impactful. I think he has like two or three saves, and he's had some pretty nasty stuff. He's striking out, I think, like 60% of the batters he's faced so far. Like, it's just it's just awesome. You know, losing Felix for this year was was a huge blow to, I think, just like the the minds and the, the hearts of these Orioles fans, or of Orioles fans. But it's just great to, you know, see these guys step up and perform really well. I'll be it early, but, I mean, hey, if, if they can sustain any – Anything close to what they're doing right now, that's a pretty good bullpen, especially all things considered. Uh, starting pitching has also been pretty great. Um, I mean, besides Cole Irvin, but, I mean, he's a relief guy that, that's thrust into a fifth starter role after John Means and Kyle Bradish are, are down. But, I mean, he, his stuff looks nasty, and he's just having a hard time, you know. I mean, it's, it's been a lot of bloop ball. Like, I don't think he's, like, serving up meatballs. It's more just, like, I don't know, his his – Pitch selection has just been a little iffy. Like I don't think he's like laying them out, you know, center center. It's more of just like, um, they're just hitting his stuff. I don't know, but he, he's not gonna be in this role for long. Probably like another month or two, but whatever. Tyler Wells has also been all right. You know, he'll get he'll get shelled early, and then he'll lock in and go like five or six innings. He is starting tonight against um, Freddy Peralta and the Brewers at home. So we'll see if he shakes that shelled early uh, mantra. But um, yeah, it's just been it's been a lot of fun to watch the Orioles this season. I knew that going in. I was really excited for this season. I was more excited for this season than the last season, for a good reason. You know, won the AL East last year, lost in the ALDS. I'm hungry. I want the Orioles to win at all. Obviously, I want them to win at all every year. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm really happy as an Orioles fan right now for a good reason, because we're one of the best teams in baseball. We have one of the most promising futures in the league, and it's just it's just awesome. And watching Corbin Burns out on the mound every five days is a, is a blessing like I, I can't believe that that's real you know even like without Corbin Burns or even without John Means and Kyle Bradish like this rotation is still fantastic like we have Corbin Burns who is you know he's like a one nine three ERA through two uh, three starts we have Grayson Rodriguez who has also been he, he had a rough start yesterday but he's, he's been fantastic outside of that Dean Kramer just went seven innings striking out striking out six and giving up like one earned run uh, against Pittsburgh on Sunday like we just have these three top guys and Wells and Oliver and Irvin, albeit you know, I keep saying albeit, but um, they're just they're just doing great. Like I think the pit, the pitching this year has been pretty, pretty good, all things considered, and it's just fun to watch. Like the offense has also been fantastic. Um, a lot of our guys strike out a lot, and uh, like we don't have a guy starting off uh, super super hot. Uh, besides Colton Cowser. Like, I mean, a few seasons ago, like, Cedric Mullins was leading the, leading the league in hits for a while. Adley Rutschman started off 5-for-5. Five five. Like, we don't have, like, these, like, super, super hot guys besides Colton Kowser. But, you know, we're putting the ball in play. And and that's just top to bottom, the production level throughout the, the lineup, which is just awesome. Like, it's just fun where it's baseball right now. And I'm just having a great time because baseball, baseball season is the best time of the year. And I'm just I'm, – I'm so happy that it's back. Go O's. Uh, three games set against the Brewers this week. Or next three days, and then we take on the Twins. I'm probably going to go to the game on Tuesday with my brother. So that's exciting. I love the Orioles so much. It, they make me so happy. So that's sports stuff. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I really want to talk about. Nothing really Eagles besides talk of a Devontae Smith extension, which, I mean, yes, sign it right now, Howie. Please, for the love of God, I want to see him in midnight green for the rest of his career. But yeah, that's sports talk. March Madness is kind of meh. UConn won. My brackets were ridiculously busted by the Sweet 16, so I didn't really care anymore. I have such like an excitement and like a euphoric feeling filling out my brackets, but then then they just always inevitably just get incredibly busted within like the first week of, of games. I just kind of get disappointed. But UConn won. They have like six championships and like five in the last like twenty years, which is just ridiculous. But yeah, let's let's move in. I'm gonna read some Reddit stories because that's always fun. And I'm gonna take a sip of water. We're winding down here. I might do the Wordle as well. I'm gonna read like two or three. Am I the asshole? <clears throat> Maybe some confessions too. And I want to read like new Am I the asshole? Um, so they don't have like the not the asshole flair. I'm going to read this one. Am I the asshole for telling my father I do know about that? <clears throat> I, female 28, am a wildlife biologist. I have a master's degree in wildlife conservation. I'm hoping to go for my doctorate soon. I worked in this field since I was 16, and I'm very passionate about it. When visiting my family recently for Easter, my mom asked me to tell the family a little bit about my work. I was very excited to talk about my current research. Here's where the issue comes in, though. 
My father, male, 60, would respond to almost everything I said with, hmm, I don't know about that. At first I tried to ignore it, but I, I just it just didn't stop. Eventually I responded, well, I do. Given the two degrees at all, I responded in a light, playful tone, but in, he did not take it well at all. He immediately accused me of being disrespectful. I responded, I'm sorry, but it's disrespectful for you to insinuate, for you to insinuate that you know more than I do about my field. Then I got pretty quiet about that. I finished my meal, helped with the dishes, and said goodbye before leaving. But on the ride home, I got a phone call from my mother asking why, why, asking me why I felt the need to aggravate my father and why I had to, to talk back. I am a 28-year-old 28, 28 professional. This feels insane to me. Am I the asshole? No, you're not. Your dad is a dickhead. End of story. Next story. I want, I want some real, like I should probably like, you know, um, what's the word? Um, gather or... There's like another word. It starts with a P. Um, I don't know. Like I, 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 this is a solo run show, so I don't have you know a producer like Smosh does or like some of those other Reddit reading stories. They're they're not able to you know gather some interesting stories. So I'm, I'm just doing this on my own. So you know, cut me some slack. Um, let's read this one. There's no flair for it. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for not wanting to be nice to my dad's girlfriend of 15 years? Interesting. Um, I'm going to say yes, just based off this. Whatever. I am twenty. I am a 27 female. Daddy's girl, if you will. My parents divorced when I was 13. Dad, 53 male, has been with me. Been with the same girlfriend, 55 female, this whole time. Her name is Susan. Susan and I never really bonded, but I was always respectful towards her for my dad's sake. I did have an older brother. They got along great. To the point where she was in awe of him. When my brother passed away in 2022 from an overdose, things went downhill in my brother's one-year celebration of life that I planned with my dad. Susan had a horrible time and started a fight with me because she wanted, she wanted to plan it, which then she blamed me for his death and said she's hated me since she's met me. My dad heard everything and told me in the heat of the argument, people say the worst things they don't mean. Time has, time has passed since that happened. I put a lot of space between me and her to the point where we do not talk. It's on my birthday, April 6th. I went to visit my dad. My dad asked me to say hi to Susan, but I did not feel comfortable doing so. Susan made a scene because I wouldn't say hi to her, but I feel like she owes me an apology before we go any further. Dad yelled at me on the top of his lungs to drop it and took her side. My dad said, if you can't be nice to her, then get the fuck out. I feel like I'm on the back burner. My dad and I haven't spoken since my birthday. Am I the asshole for not winning? Yeah. No, you're not the asshole because your dad's girlfriend seems like a a prick and a bitch. Um, well, let's see. Uh, not the asshole info. She blamed me for his death. Why would that be? Did you or anyone else in the family engage in what would be considered enabling behavior? My brother lived with my dad and Susan until he went to rehab that last time. Then he ended up living with my mom when he got out. He was there three months and then ended up overdosing in her house. I wasn't involved at all, just a grieving sibling. I've been living on my own since I was 18, but I always talked with my brother on the phone or just through text. Yeah, this lady seems crazy. Not the asshole. Not a lot of nuanced stories here. Um. Oh, here we go. This, this this is a weird one. <laughs> Am I the asshole for wearing my girlfriend's clothes and refusing to change? I, 16 males, at my girlfriend's 16 females place, and she made me try on her clothes as like a joke because we found out that we're the same size. I tried on a crop, crop t-shirt and low-rise jeans. She told me that I looked hot and told me to keep it on, so I did because, yeah, I looked hot. She gave me the clothes to keep. My mom called me and told me to come home because my uncle and aunt was there, and I should say hi. I forgot to change. I went home in my girlfriend's clothes. I didn't think it'd be a problem or anything, but my parents were so pissed off. Once I said hi to my aunt and uncle, my mom pulled me to the kitchen and told me to go change. She told me in an embarrassment. I refused to change, I refused to change because, like, what the fuck, actually? Why does she care so much? That made her ten times angry, and she called me disrespectful and some other shit. After my aunt and uncle had gone, my dad agreed with my mom and told me I should go throw the throw the clothes away or give it back to my girlfriend. I said no because the clothes were cool. I don't get why they care so much it's just clothes my dad asked me if i'm gay when I, when I said no he told me that i looked gay and i just laughed at him and then my mom grounded me am i the asshole i feel like they're overreacting like getting rid of the clothes though i looked hot i don't care my girlfriend likes it that's all i care about tbh not the asshole your parents are stupid dickheads end of story uh yeah that's what what do you mean did the aunt and uncle say anything or is it just these parents being insecure come on give me some nuance here Ooh. Whoa. Okay. I'll read this one. A little longer. Okay. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for not giving up inheritance so my sister can have a free house? I'm 51. My sister is 45. I have worked full-time in two professional careers for more than 25 years. 
My sister has worked mostly dead-end, low-paying jobs for her whole life. I graduated in the top 5% of my senior class. She dropped out and got a GED. I have a clean criminal history. She was once charged with domestic abuse for hitting my mom. I've been married for 25 years and waited until year three to have kids. She got pregnant out of wedlock to a creep and left him, thank heavens. For most of, my, for some, for most of the past 20 years, my mom supported my sister. My sister didn't pay her any rent, nor did she pay for utilities or any other bills. In fact, my mom probably paid her for gas. I like they paid for car repairs. Oh, my sister drives a Mustang, of course. That's funny. Anyway, my mom died in February. She left my sister and me equal shares of her assets. Basically, she left us a house. Two years before she died, she got into some spats with my sister. We were told to move out after my mom's side. After my mom died, my sister moved back into her house. Her 21-year-old son lives there, too. So does his college friend. Two weeks ago, my sister and I spoke with an attorney. She had tried to do she had tried to do probate and screwed it all up, so I got involved to have a lawyer handle it. He said we have three options with the house. My sister can buy out my portion by getting a bank loan. Secondly, she can buy a contract from me. The last option is that we can agree to sell it. After two weeks, my sister hasn't even filed filled out a loan application. I expect that, that she's stalling. After all, she is living for there for free. You know, I live far away and pay almost 3000 a month in rent. Jesus. I badly want to get my equity from the house so I can buy a piece of place of my own. Today, I talked to my sister. She gave me a guilt trip. She said her mom wanted us to keep a house in the family then that her son is sad because it's the house he grew up in. I got a little annoyed and said I can't give up equity in a home because my nephew is sad. Naturally, she didn't respond. So am I supposed to feel sorry for her and just let her have the house? It seems like this is what she expects. Uh, I don't think you're the asshole. Um, you're being a little curt, which I think is, you know, fine. You're, you know, you guys are full-grown adults with children. Um, yeah, I think the sister's just a little, you know, I don't know. I don't think you're the asshole because, you know, you're trying to go about this in you know, the most logical fashion. And she's just kind of, you know, trying to, you know, take the free stuff. Not the asshole. Sisters get her shit together. Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, ah, oh, shoot. Well, whatever. Next story. Come on, give me some. I'll do one more and I'll get us to some confessions. Hmm. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for continuing to make lunch for my coworker, even if my if even if his wife asked me not to? Huh. I, 23 female, have been working in the same place, warehousing, since I turned 18. It pays me well enough that I'm actively saving to buy a house. For the last four years, I've been making extra money by making and selling lunches to some of my coworkers. My food tastes better than anything we can get close by, and is also cheaper. Now I have to be very clear: these are coworkers. They are not friends. There is no work wife or husband BS going on. I just sell them lunches and we usually eat them at the same time, place, break room. One of my coworkers, 30s male, has gotten married earlier this year, and he's still continuing to buy lunch for me, which is normal since most of my customers are also married. But earlier this week, I got a call from his wife, and she asked me, more like ordered me, to stop making her husband lunches. It was a weird conversation, but I just said that if she doesn't want to buy lunches for me, she should tell him to stop asking me himself. Then I got a terse goodbye. I also got sent a text to my coworker telling him that happened and asking him to tell his wife to never contact me again. Jeez, that's a little... That's a little much. He was apologetic and assured me that he will be talking with her, but he didn't stop buying lunches for me, and I continued to sell them to him. This led to his wife sending me a scathing text calling me a home-wrecking whore. I didn't reply. I just forwarded it to her husband and blocked her. He apologized to me again, told me that he'd talk with her, and said that he would still buy lunches for me if he was okay with it, and I said, sure, money is money. Then I was to my roommate, and she said that I was being an asshole. It's not like he is my friend, but I could do without his $10 a day to help, me save his, to help him save his marriage. So am I the asshole? Edit. Since a lot of people ask, I assume he got she got his number from his phone. We have a group chat that I use to post weekly meal plans, receive orders, and that's the only reason my coworkers have my phone number. Edit two. I have a permit to cook, distribute food from home. My kitchen is up to code. The only reason I have a roommate so I could afford a house with a big kitchen and space for a separate fridge freezer. Um, I don't think you're the asshole. Uh, there's a lot of I've read a lot of stories and seen a lot of stories where it's like these other people make statements for their partner where it's like, oh, you're doing, stop doing this with my partner. But it's like, how about you just tell your partner to stop doing that as opposed to, you know, telling, you know, skipping, you're skipping a step there. I don't think of the asshole. I think this wife is just kind of being a little dramatic. Like if you don't want your husband buying lunches from her, how about you make your husband lunch or tell your husband, like tell your husband to stop doing it as opposed to telling the person that's just, you know, the lowly um, lunch salesman. Yeah, that, that's that's stupid. Oh, uh, those are lame stories. Let me get, let's get some let's, let's get some let's get some confessions. Uh, ooh. What? Is, 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 is this isn't really a confession. Okay. 
My wife just told me she's transgender. I guess I'm gay now. Uh, my wife and I have a normal marriage, or so I thought. We've been married for three years and dated for two. My wife is very beautiful and feminine, and up until last night, had never shown any inclination of questioning her gender. Last night, she told me she wanted to talk about something, and we sat down, and she said, I think I might be trans. I'll confess that I laughed because, again, there had been zero inclination that she's questioning her gender. So I thought she was joking. Obviously, this didn't go over well, and she got, and she got very upset. I apologize, but she remained volatile through the whole discussion. I asked her why she felt she was a man, and she couldn't answer me. I asked if she was going to transition, and she said she didn't know. I asked if she was still in love with me with and attracted to me, and she said yes. We talked a bit more, and I tried to hear her out and be respectful. But honestly, I'm pretty pissed off. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't sign up for this at all. I'm not attracted to men, or and so obviously I didn't. I don't want my wife to look like. Look, I don't want my wife to look like one. It also really bothers me that this came out of nowhere and totally blindsided me. It's also weird that there isn't anything about my wife that seems masculine to me. I, I get that not everyone fits into a perfect gender role or whatever, but I just don't understand. I'm so upset. I called out at work today, well, and she's at work, and honestly, I've been depressed and drinking all day and crying over the thought of my wife taking hormones to grow body hair and cutting her breasts off. I think people have the right to do that, and I have nothing against trans people, but if she really wants to be a man, then it's legitimately not the person that I married, and I can't make that work. I feel like my entire life is collapsing around me. Um, Yeah. Actually, no, no, you're fair. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Here's a comment. Coming from a transgender person, break up with them. Don't try to enforce yourself to be attracted to gender you aren't. That's not on you. We all have preferences, and it's better for you to both and your partner that you find someone you are compatible with. Don't try to be gay for to make things easy, man. It never works. Yeah, that just sucks. That's just a, that's just a, I mean, you know, uh, you know, up, up transgender people, but it's like, you know, if that happens, you know, you're not. Attracted to them. I, I saw, I'm not Dr. Phil. What am I doing? Um, let's see here. What the fuck is going whoa, whoa, oh my god. What? Hold on. Oh, here we go. This is the last story for the episode. It's a long one. Yeah. I ruined my best friend's life and I still feel guilty and horrible about it about it. Ten ma- ten years later. I ruined my best friend's life and I still feel guilty and horrible about it ten years later. Me and my friend were basically friends since six years old. We met in primary school and we were best friends since. I that I ruined it for nothing. So when I was 10, I liked this guy and I wanted to impress him by being bad slash mean, trying to act tough to impress him. I know it's disgusting to, I know it's disgusting and cringe to say it even now. So, I let, so literally I went out of my way to basically bully my best friend who I'd known for almost five years. I stole her lunch money, would call her names. And then at the end of it after school, I, I had chased her down the street, empty threats. I was never going to harm her and throwing stones across the street. Jesus. I don't know why I did this. I love my best friend more than anything. All this to impress some guy who is known to be a bad guy. I was just trying to impress him by destroying a friendship I have. Anyway, my friend says they have trauma and PTSD now, and I can't help but blame myself. I've been friendless for almost 10 years now, and every single day I regret what I did. I really liked her, and we were truly best friends. I did the most disgusting, horrible thing to some for some boy. I really wish I never did that, what I did. I, I wish I never said those threats. It's absolutely despicable and disgusting what I did. I don't know why I did it. Just to impress some boy. I can't forgive myself. I hope she's okay now. I've had this regret for almost 10 years. It's almost every day I think about it. I regret. Okay, this is just. Shut the fuck up. That's it for Reddit stories. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Talks with Walks. It's nice to get back in the saddle here and just talk about stuff I like, which is what the show is about. I need a lot in to get some more guests because the episodes with guests are like 10 times better than the ones where it's just me. But still, when it's just me, I have a good time. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Talks with Walks. It will be up on YouTube same day, so you can look for that on YouTube and on Spotify. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.